What is up and welcome back. If this is your first time watching, we are your Emerald Coast relocation team. In this video right here we're gonna be doing is talking about the difference between Pensacola, Florida and Panama City, Florida. Not to be confused with Pensacola Beach and Panama City Beach. These are gonna be your mainland areas that we're gonna be talking about. And there's actually a reason why we did this video is there's, I wouldn't say like it's a ton of people, but we definitely had a good handful of people who are pretty much comparing Panama City to Pensacola, which one would really be best for them. And some of them ultimately end up choosing Panama City, but we have seen that Pensacola has ultimately been their choice of where they wanted to live. So I'm gonna dive into some, it's mainly all statistics guys. Towards the end of this, I am gonna be bringing in uh, Pensacola Beach and Panama City Beach into the mix to kind of compare two of those on one stat and one stat only. So first things first, let's talk about that size and area. How large are these areas when we are talking about about square miles. If we are looking at Pensacola, we're looking at 39.7 square miles as compared to Panama City, where it's 41.27 square miles. And then if we talk about that location, kind of where these two cities are, because you might be one of those people that's like, all right, I really don't know. I should know that they're both in the Gulf. Pensacola is pretty much your furthest, most west city, main city in Florida, in the Panhandle, whereas Panama City is a good, you know, two, two and a half hours, depending on, on how fast you're driving from Pensacola to the east. So it's a little bit closer to that armpit of the Florida Panhandle. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that population. I do have my notes here because I can't remember all these numbers by heart. So first let's talk about the population of Pensacola. Population of Pensacola is 52,918 people. And between 2021 and 2022, that population is up 0.397%, not that much, not even a full percentage point over that year span. And then if we look over at Panama City, you got a population of 35,952 people, and that is actually down 0.181%. Now to be fair with this, um, Pensacola, like when we've looked at over it recently, it does look like it's pretty much doing like a slightly level when we're talking about your population growth, if not dipping down just a little bit. And the majority of the people that we are seeing relocating over into the Panama City area are actually going more over into Panama City Beach. It is good to compare the two kind of mainland cities so we can compare apples to apples. Another thing to look at because a lot of people are saying how Panama City is becoming a lot younger, right? And so if we look at the median age over in Pensacola, you got a median age of 36.8. If we look over at Panama City, you got a median age of 39.8. Then the last one we'll do on kind of all these numbers is going to be your median household income. If we look at Pensacola, it's actually $67,722 per household. If we look over at Panama City, it's 57,221. That's a $10,000 gap between that median household income. Quick note on this is majority of these stats that we are getting are from areavibes.com. It is a resource that we love going to. It's all encompassing when we are talking about a lot of these stats. And actually this next step, which is gonna be the livability score of each of these areas according to areavibe.com. So first we'll do Pensacola. If we are talking about that livability score and I'm gonna break it down even further into what factors really go into this livability score from areavibes.com. So Pensacola's livability score is going to be an 80 Three. What is Panama City? Panama City is going to be a 71. Now let's go ahead and compare those grades across a few different topics to see kind of why Pensacola is rating a little bit higher in regards to that livability as compared to Panama City. First, let's look at your amenities. And I guarantee if this was Panama City Beach that this number would be very similar to Pensacola. But amenities, Pensacola is graded an A, whereas Panama City is graded an F. Next one is going to be your commute. When we're looking at your commute, Pensacola is graded an A+, whereas Panama City is graded an F. The next one is going to be your cost of living, and both of these cities actually are great in cost of living majority of the times. When we are talking about your cost of living, it's based off of your national average, right? So compared to the national average, where do both of these cities rack up? Both of them actually come in at an A plus and make sure you stick around because we're going to dive in a little bit deeper into that when we are talking about purchasing real estate in either of these cities. 
The next one is going to be crime, and both these cities didn't have excellent scores, but, but Pensacola still beats out Panama City coming in with a C grade, where if you look over at Panama City, it comes in at an F, and that's never good when you add a crime score of an F. Again, all of these grades are according to areavibes.com. Now let's look at that employment. Again, this grade isn't the best, but when looking at employment in Pensacola, it comes in with a grade of a C, where Panama City comes in with a grade of a D. So it sounds like employment might be a little bit better over in Pensacola as compared to Panama City. The next one's going to be health and health. They both came in rated highly at an A+. I will tell you though, and I'm sure you guys have seen the news stories about kind of all these shark attacks happening, you know, 30A, Destin, all these kind of areas. Majority of those shark attacks, people were getting flown into the hospitals in Pensacola. I have heard, I have not found the statistic yet, but Pensacola has a highly rated hospital system. And we are talking about these shark bites, a trauma system as well within the two main hospital systems that they do have over in Pensacola. Now let's look at housing. Housing, both of these cities, again, rated highly, both coming in at an A+. Again, make sure you stick around. I'm gonna break it into those median sales prices. And we are talking about the real estate in both of these cities. And the next one is going to be schools where Pensacola comes in as C+. And this is the only one that Panama City actually beats out Pensacola coming in at a B+. Now, Pensacola, majority of it is going to be your Escambia County schools. That county, when we are talking about, you know, Santa Rosa County, Oklahoma, Lusa County. It's definitely the lowest ranked when we are looking at like niche.com. Then when we're looking over at, at Panama City, they got Bay District schools. So it looks like Panama City, when we are talking about this mainland, not the air, the metro areas of these areas, does have an edge up on Pensacola when we are talking about the school system. But then if we break it even further into schools, going to niche.com, because niche.com is a resource that we use all the time. We love their grading system when we are talking about schools. Escambia County actually comes in a B minus, and then the Bay District comes in a B plus. So so not that big of a difference when we do look over at niche.com. All right, guys, it's time to finally dive into the median sales prices when we are talking about real estate in both of these cities. Before I do that, though, I am going to mention that we are helping out so many of you who are relocating in the Emerald Coast. We're pretty much talking about Destin all the way over to Pensacola. We don't necessarily help you out with Panama City. We're not going to go two and a half hours from wherever you are. So if you are looking at pursuing real estate in this Emerald Coast area, make sure you give us a call or text at that phone number right below. Right below right there, we have a team of licensed realtors, including myself and Trent, who help you out with all your real estate needs we make sure to focus on those relocating in the area and that's probably about 99% of the business that we do do but if you're not quite ready to purchase make sure you smash that subscribe button give us a thumbs up notification bell that we notified of the latest stuff that is coming into the Emerald Coast all right let's go ahead and break into those housing prices now the housing prices Let's see, I'm gonna go, because typically what we do when we talk about this median sales price is we do your overall, your overall price, including your single family, your attached, lumped into one number. That's gonna be your overall number. In Pensacola, you got a median sales price of $299,000, and that is actually down 3.55%. And I think there's gonna be something telling when we get into the attached as to why this number is down. If we look over at the overall price over in Panama City, you got a median sales price of $295,000. So what is that, a thousand dollar difference? Not that much of a difference, but it is up 0.03%. So let's just go ahead and say that over in Panama City, year over year, it's just been pretty much level when we're talking about those median sales prices. Now let's go ahead and break into that single family uh, median sales price. Over in Pensacola, you've got a median sales price of $295,000, and that is down 1.67%. If we look over in Panama City, you got a median sales price of $296,000. So that's only $1,000 over your overall price, and that is up 0.27%. When I look at this number, especially over in Panama City, what this tells me is that the majority of your housing that is going to be over in Panama City is going to be your single family product since that number is so close to what that overall median sales price is. Now let's go ahead and dive into your median sales price on your attached products. We're talking about your, your condos, your townhouses, your row homes and this one okay i don't think for those of you who watch our channel i don't think this will be too surprising to you because we we actually talk about this why this number is so high the attached median sales price in pensacola is four hundred thousand dollars but that number is down 59.5 percent 
year over year. So I guess let's go ahead and just approach that. Why is the attached products so much higher than your single family products? And there's the main reason for that. That is going to be Perdido Key. Perdido Key has a ton of luxury condos over there where you're lucky to even get it for $400,000. I'm talking easy like 800s up into the millions and the multi-millions when you are looking at these luxury condos over in Perdido Key because those aren't necessarily accounted for in your Pensacola Beach area when we are talking about these statistics. Compared to Panama City, you got a median sales price on those attached products of $139,000. So almost a fourth of the median sales price of Pensacola when we are talking about your attached products. Year over year, that number is also down. Not as much as the 59%, but it's still down quite a bit at 22.8%. Let's go ahead and dive into the beaches now though. And, and here's something that might be huge for you guys because Panama City Beach is, is talked about quite a bit. We still talk to people who have never visited, you know, uh, Pensacola Beach. They more so go down to like Panama City Beach or even over into Destin, uh, Miramar, that area over there. Panama City is much popular and it does show when we are talking about these tourist numbers, the annual number of tourists who are visiting both of these areas. So first let's talk about Pensacola Beach. Pensacola Beach on average is, has been getting about 2.5 million visitors per year. What are we looking at when we're talking about Panama City Beach? Panama City Beach comes in almost double at 4.5 million people per year. That's how many tourists are visiting Panama City Beach. Here's why this could be a huge deal is us personally, when we are here in the summertime, because you know, since we are locals, yes, the tourists do their thing. Every now and then it does get a little annoying, but that's with two and a half million people, guys. And we're raising our family here and everything. We don't get too many tourists who are flooding kind of over into our Pensacola metro area. But if you're talking about Panama City Beach, getting almost double the amount of tourists, I can only imagine what an annoyance that would be if you actually live in the area. And let's say you have a company that, that thrives off that tourism, right? You have some type of a company, Airbnbs, whatever it might be, that thrives off the amount of tourism that are going down there that is that many more tourists that are going to be visiting kind of surrounding your place of home you're going to be dealing with that every single summer when they are all coming down panama city beach i don't know if this is still a thing but i think it was called like the the, the spring break capital of florida i'm not sure if that's still the same thing but i mean i'm just saying that like me personally i don't mind the amount of tourists that are coming to us now Going over to somewhere that has 4.5 million tourists per year, that sounds like it's a little painful when we're talking about being able to enjoy your beaches come summertime. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. I greatly appreciate it. This video had a lot of numbers. And for those of you who follow us, you know how much I do not enjoy these numbers videos as much as being able to share our experiences with you when relocating into the Pensacola metro area. Thank you so much. If you are looking at relocating into the Pensacola metro area, make sure you give us a car text at that phone number right below. Right below right there, we always answer. It doesn't matter day or time, but if you're not quite ready to purchase, give us a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, notification bell that we notify of the latest stuff that is coming into the Emerald Coast. And until next time, we love you. Bye.